Hello everyone and welcome to Solar System Tourism and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. This series is based on my Twitch exploits where I offered rides to various locations around the solar system to my viewers in exchange for struts, which is our in-stream currency on Twitch. So this particular mission is a launch to the International Space Station with the Space Shuttle Atlantis here and we've got two such, oh no, three such tourists, if you will, Aaron M MLT18 and Woozy Woozy, uh, all wanted a trip. I think Aaron M is the only one who is staying at the space station out of these. Uh, the other two are coming straight back down. They did, they couldn't afford the space station stay package. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so this has been a long-running series on Twitch for a while now. Uh, this particular video was captured on June 13th, so we've been at it for about five months. And actually, I'm producing the shortened videos of this on YouTube because I need to delete the original videos. They've been piling up on my hard drive and they now occupy about 600 gigabytes, a little bit over 600 gigabytes. So I think I should just, you know, create a condensed version and delete them finally. So here we go. The shuttle has uh, supplies in the bay. You can see uh, one of those MPLMs in the shuttle bay and once we arrived at the space station I realized I needed to free up the port that was currently occupied by Dragon 2. Dragon 2 for some reason lost its trunk. I don't know how. It just randomly didn't have the trunk anymore. This is not a problem for relocating it though. So we needed to free up that one PMA because that's where the shuttle docks. It's difficult for it to dock on any of the others, but that also happened to be where the Dragon 2 that carried the demo crew up uh, docked, so we had the station in that configuration ahead of time, and so I'm redocking it here now. Uh, I don't know about the trunk and why it just randomly decided to separate, but anyway, so that maneuver done, and I wanted to make sure everything was okay with that. We brought the shuttle in. Now, this is a heck of a lot more of an involved docking uh, because, for reasons unknown to me, if I try to control from the docking port, uh, we can't really hold stability with Smart ASS or SAS. So I'm having to control from the cockpit in order to have the kill rotation on Smart ASS work, which I dearly want. So uh, orientation had to be by eyeball, basically. If I try to control from the docking port and use either SAS or Smart ASS, it starts oscillating out of control. It uh, starts wiggling a little bit and then wiggles more and wiggles more, so I don't get it. But anyway, here we are docking with our first crew in Solar System Tourism. So this, uh, the ISS had already been built and that was built, uh, you can see the videos, assembly of the International Space Station video. I've uh, described how I built the space station in multiple versions. The space station was originally started in 1.1.3. I continued in 1.3.1. This is 1.8.1. And uh, so it took a little bit of doing to get the same save to work in 1.8.1, but I managed it. And so that's a basis for what we have here. Now, the shuttle didn't have enough fuel to come back, or at least uh, I didn't feel like it had enough. So I decided that maybe we should launch a little bit more fuel. And so I'm using an H2B. This is from Tanagashima. We're launching from Tanagashima, even though it's dark and you can't really see very well. And there will be problems. Uh, there will be problems because I hadn't tried this properly. Uh, the launches are being controlled by KOS at this point. So the shuttle and this. And that includes the booster separations, which are a little bit awkward. But I forgot a little bit of a quirk with this particular Japanese launch pack H2V, and that's that the fairings don't decouple with a normal staging. They have a jettison thing. And if you try and use normal staging, it actually decouples off the payload from the payload adapter, which is what's happened here. So we have to relaunch. So here we go again. If you see my more recent shuttle videos, those were the product of lessons learned from this solar system tourism stuff. And in particular, we will see a problem that occurs later on in this video that I subsequently figured out the solution to. 
And to a large extent, solar system tourism is going to be about figuring out these problems and finding solutions to them. Uh, I'm experimenting with my own mods, for instance, and also uh, different systems that I'm going to be introducing. Uh, it's not going to be purely uh, realistic launchers. There will be some experimental systems, for instance, nuclear systems, and uh, because of a certain Mercury mission, we ultimately try out the Attila thrusters from KSB Interstellar, but, uh, you know, we aren't going warp drive or anything, but uh, thing things will be attempted and checked out surely out of my own curiosity in a way, but like the regolith bases, if you saw those videos, parts that I've made in various videos will get their experimental use during this series, so that's partly what it's about. So there will be failures, okay, I mean, and I'll show you the failures. There will be problems, and so if you're expecting perfect results out of this, that's not going to happen. That's not really the job of this series. So again, we have a failure. <laughs> um, uh, the problem is I overloaded the HTV here. I put too much in, and it the H2B, the launcher, did not have enough to make orbit, and also the plumes don't work on this HTV, but that I did not find a fix for. But it doesn't have enough thrust to make orbit. It has the delta V, it just didn't have enough thrust. So, poof. And so I had to underload it a little bit more. I was a little bit too optimistic. Not that the shuttle needs that much fuel, but I think I was planning on storing extra fuel at the space station just in case something else needed it. Or a subsequent shuttle mission needed a top off. I mean, not a top off. You definitely don't want it to have all of its fuel, but. Anyway, here we are launching again. I hope you like H2B launches. And booster set. Alright. And I decided to wait on the fairings until after the upper stage. So that's what we have here. And now I'm jettisoning the fairings. I did not, uh, and they jettisoned that awkward reverse way, I don't know, it's weird. The script controls the trajectory and it felt it needed to pitch up, I think it was right in that case. But ultimately this time we did not re-enter and it did end up with enough Delta V, just barely. It was close, but there we are. So now we can proceed on to the station. This, uh, these little thrusters have an obscene burn time, like more than an hour, but it's better than Cygnus. Uh, Cygnus has just one of these thrusters. I think it's an identical thruster. But it has some sort of like six hour burn time. I mean, you have your luxury for how long you want to take once you're in orbit uh, to approach the space station. You don't need to be a speed demon about it, but yeah, it's painful in the game if you're trying to rendezvous Cygnus with the space station, which is why HTV is sort of nicer. It's got four times the thrust. Well, it's also heavier too, so there's that. Anyway, so here is our approach. And this does not use a PMA. It's a common berthing mechanism. So just a few nice shots. It's always good to get practical use out of the ISS. It's not going to be our only space station. So we're doing tourism to the ISS in this video, but the, I've already mentioned somebody had enough struts for a Mercury mission. And there are other missions that go out to all sorts of locations. Not all of them have reached, for instance. Um, we have had viewers wanting missions to Uranus. Uh, and that takes a long time. And since there are other windows in the meantime, they're just merely on their way. You know, there's a Saturn mission, but who knows if in this decade real time they actually get there. <laughs> I don't know. The life support for those situations, because we do have TAC life support in here, that's a tricky business. And so we'll see how that works out for them. All right, so the shuttles return. And this is, again, controlled by KOS, my normal re-entry script. In this phase, though, I was having trouble with the re-entry scripts, and uh, this is partly because I was switching between two versions of the shuttle. 
There was uh, a radar version of the Deku shuttle and then also a Dylan Semro uh, version of the Deku shuttle, uh, which also was a version of other shuttles prior to it. But uh, here during the main part of re-entry, it's so far so good. It's handling the thermal well except for the rudder for some reason. Uh, but there was a particular problem that eventually uh, fixed. Uh, here I'm displaying the COM and COL. I'm using that attitude adjustment thing to show where those are. There's a red sphere and the blue sphere inside the body of the spacecraft, so you can see where those are. It's pretty tight there. Uh, but where they are right now, you can see it's not requiring a whole lot of pitch authority to control the shuttle, so it's okay. The problem here is, and what's going to cause the disaster, <laughs> uh, spoilers, is that I, the script pitched down too early. And what happens is the vertical stabilizer isn't good enough to hold stability at those speeds and those heights. So we had to delay the pitch down and that solved the problem. That's it. That's all that needed to happen to avoid this particular breakup. It's an aerodynamic breakup. It wasn't thermal. So please, no no Columbia in the in the comments, okay, please? Anyway, uh, we tried to save our Kerbals, and uh, the first time I EVA'd, uh, the Kerbal got stuck in the rear um, docking assembly. So that I figured out was not a good thing. So we tried to... Oh, and uh, it looks like Barafel was also on this mission. I missed that. Um, but we tried to parachute them down, so Barafel is parachuting down there. Aaronim uh, was part of the crew that entered the space station and we delivered those supplies. And I think we were bringing some people back too. Oh, there's also a, another viewer, JPM. But some of these viewers did not show up again after this mission, so... Meh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so... Here we go, trying to save them, trying desperately to save them before we impact the surface. Uh, that didn't quite work out, but don't worry, don't worry. Uh, we're kind to our tourists in this. Uh, we actually do not have permadeath for Kerbals in this save. This is a sandbox save, okay? I, I forgot to mention that right up front. This is a sandbox save. We're not spending money. This is a testing save. It's meant to test new parts and new systems. So we do have a Kerbal reincarnation that that happens, or whatever you want to call it. Unfortunately, we also have Kerbal sinking, which was a little bit of a problem, but uh, this Kerbal managed to hit the ocean floor, or what, uh, it's actually pretty shallow. And so we were able to recover at that point, and I was also able to recover another Kerbal from the tracking station. But anyway, that's the Solar System Tourism series, and I'll produce more videos in it. With that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.